Hello everyone, what's the crack? I have a video for you today. This is gonna be a bit of a chitty chat video. It's not gonna be like um, really all crack. <laughs> um, it's gonna be more of a sort of serious video. So if you're not into that, maybe give this one a must. But if you would like to watch it and maybe get to know me a bit better and my sobriety story, then continue watching. I have debated whether or not to make this video quite a bit because it is quite a sort of personal um, thing and it, I felt very vulnerable about the idea of making it um, but I decided that it was a good idea because uh, there are other people who may be going through what I did. The reason that I did decide to go ahead and make it then was uh, whenever I started my sobriety journey I've started following a lot of pages on like Instagram and Facebook and there's a lot of people who follow me now as well um, and kind of follow my journey and have requested me to make this video because they know I have a YouTube channel and I feel like with having a YouTube channel and I know I'm not a huge YouTuber or anything but like I still have people who watch my videos and I want to help where I can um, so I thought like if it's going to help one person then I'm gonna make it. Um, I don't see the problem in that. So, if it's not something that you're into, then you can just wait until Wednesday, and I'll have another video out. Um, so I have a wee cup of tea, and I'll just be drinking away at that while I'm having a wee chat with these. Um, I apologise again for the sound in the background of my dogs. They will be here the whole time, and they'll probably fry everyone's heads, but. There's not really anything I can do about that. They're my, they're my wee buddies. I'm now four months sober, by the way, for anyone wondering. Completely sober. Uh, it's about four months and two days or something. I think it was just two days ago, my wee month sobriety date was. And I want to talk about why I decided to make the decision to stop drinking. So anyone who doesn't follow my um, Instagram, you can follow it. I'll actually link it in the description if anyone wants to follow it. Um, it's Diary of a Sober Lady. So the reasons that I became sober are um, pretty much laid out in this very first post that I put on Instagram. So I'm actually just going to read that out first before I do anything else. So this was my sort of introduction on my Instagram account. So this is what it says. Hi, my name is Caitlin. I'm 24 years old and I'm an alcohol abuser. Not many people in my life have actually known the extent of my drinking problem until recently, and even still, I have only told a few. I began drinking when I was 11 years old, which is crazy for me to think about now. My heart is filled with regret of this, as I now remember very little of my teen years, as they were filled with both accidental and intentional blackouts, and I can never get those years back. In my late teens, my drinking became worse as I became more tolerant to alcohol. I was drinking a hell of a lot to get drunk, which was causing seriously bad after effects. At more than one stage in my life, my boyfriend, now husband, saved my life as I choked on my own vomit. As I came into my twenties, I began to notice that I was definitely getting out of hand. I was beginning to have frequent fallouts with my husband, friends and family. I have been diagnosed with depression and anxiety and I truly believe my alcohol consumption has had the biggest impact on this. I got into a rut of drinking to escape reality which in turn worsened my situation in everyday life causing me to look to drink again. I have used it as somewhat of a coping mechanism for many years. In the past few years I have been drinking the guts of a litre bottle of spirits myself sometimes more if it's available and if not I'll usually drink whatever's handed to me. I moved to rum because vodka wasn't working the same for me anymore. Now I'm at the same point with the rum, pour more before I've even finished my drink. I have had a low point in my life with my depression and anxiety increasing in, on the daily. I realise now I don't even know who I really am. I wear a mask every day to cope with different social situations, to seem like I'm able, like I'm confident and okay. When I drink I feel confident and fun and liked. But the consequences on my day-to-day -day life outweigh these positives immensely. Therefore, I have made the decision to completely cut out alcohol. 
It has now been 10 days and I am feeling positive. I wanted to make this account to track my journey. So that is the very first post that I put on Instagram, which was obviously when I had only quit, um, I was 10 days free of alcohol, so just over a week. Um, and even then, that was a, a big accomplishment because th I don't think there's been a week in my life since I was about 11 that I um, have spent without an alcohol for a full week. So that even was an accomplishment. So to say now that I'm free of alcohol for four months is crazy. So it's actually sort of um, made me a wee bit emotional even reading that post. That's obviously the first time I've read it back since I first wrote it. So I basically laid everything out there for you, sort of why, the reasons why. Um, my thought behind it was, I'm not an alcoholic, but I will be. That's sort of where I stood with the whole thing. I was like, I want to, I want to sort this out now before it's too late. And I knew that I was that I was abusing alcohol. I knew that I was using it. Um, I wasn't drinking to have fun anymore, or drinking just one or two every now and then for like a social reason. I was really drinking because it was the only thing. It was the only thing that really helped me like escape. That was why I was doing it, and I it ended up getting to the stage where I was drinking on like a Saturday for example and I was drinking until the following day so I was drinking into a very early Sunday morning and that would be like a litre bottle and then I would drink like more like say there was a half bottle line I would drink that or if someone else had drink left I would be drinking their drink do you know what I mean like I wasn't stopping until I literally had to stop because I was vomiting my guts up or until um I just passed out of tiredness or whatever and then the next day I was just felt awful like I had very 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 brutal hangovers that lasted a week or more um, and they were vomiting like proper bad anxiety like the worst anxiety ever uh, it was like beer fear times a thousand I was worried about everything from the night before. I was like, what did I say last night? Because I didn't remember anything. And then the whole week I was feeling sick and down and depressed. And then once it got to the weekend again, I was, it was starting again. So my whole life was literally just a cycle of alcohol, hangover, alcohol, hangover, alcohol, hangover. Like that was, that was my life. And even though I was able to do things, um, like I was still going to work. Um, I was still meeting up with friends and stuff um, but I wasn't putting my effort onto anything I was always feeling drained and tired and exhausted and just like I didn't want to do anything because like I just felt crap like my, it's hard to explain how I felt if you've never been there but imagine being hungover if you've ever felt that that's pretty much how I felt 24 7 to be honest unless I was drunk so I drank more to escape that feeling as well. <sighs> if you don't have a wee drink of tea or coffee or sugar or no sugar, a cup of sugar, uh, hot chocolate, juice, water, whatever you want, you can do that while you're watching or whatever as well. Um, the alcohol, the whole, the whole issue was my life was my life was crap. It was ruining my life. I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety and I was given medication for this as well and when I went to see the psychiatrist uh, who prescribed me alongside my GP, the first thing that she said I needed to sort out was my drinking. She said it was that was the main concern and it was potentially the biggest issue. Um, at this time. Of course there were other things um, in the background from my past or whatever that I had to work on it through therapy and stuff but the, the alcohol was the main concern because it was controlling my whole life. It was taken up every single day in my life was, was revolving around alcohol because I was either drunk, hungover, 
just coming round or I was drunk again. It, I never had any fresh days. Very rarely did I feel fresh. Very, very rarely. And that's not a good way to love your life. You should be waking up every day feeling happy and fresh and having a positive attitude. It shouldn't just be like, oh, oh, thank God the day I feel like this. Like it's just the luck of a draw. You should always feel like that. And the reason, the biggest reason why I quit drinking was because I wanted to feel like that. When the dark days are there, they're really dark and really bad. And it's all because of the alcohol. I promise you that because I don't feel like that anymore. And it's since I stopped drinking. So I know, I know myself that it was, it was the biggest hindrance. It was the biggest cause of my depression and anxiety. I'm actually in the process of trying to go off my antidepressants now because I no longer really think I need them anymore. But let's start with how I managed to quit and what helped me. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about, right, there's a list here of like different things that help me and different people. Um, but the first thing I want to talk about is like how the reason that I stopped drinking is because of me. If I didn't want to do this, I wouldn't have done it, is what I'm trying to say. There's been many times in the past when I've been advised to stop drinking, but I would I would decide I didn't want to stop drinking. So that was, so at the end of the day, when I finally made this decision, it was completely my decision. I don't think that anyone can give up alcohol unless they fully or anything actually, I don't think you can give up anything unless you personally really want to give it up. I don't think like anyone else can really do it for you as much as people would, can try. I genuinely believe that the person themselves need to want to do it and this time I really did. It's not the first time I've tried to quit drinking. I've, I've tried loads of times. It's never worked. It just didn't work for me. I wasn't serious about it. I wasn't low enough. This time I was really hitting rock bottom and I was like, before I really do hit rock bottom, I'm stopping. I made that decision myself with help, of course, but I was the one that made the choice and I was the one that stopped drinking. And I am proud of myself for that as well. But that doesn't mean that I can't give credit where credit is due. Um, first, I of course want to talk about my amazing husband, Gary, who is the most amazing, brilliant, perfect, support, husband, everything. Um, I genuinely don't think I could have done this without him, even if the desire was as strong as it is, because he helped me like so much to remember what I wanted. Whenever I was coming and, and feeling crap and feeling down and being like, oh, I would just love a drink the night. Like I would love to get so drunk, just to escape this day. And I, he was the one that was saying like, you know, you don't want that. You know, it's not gonna help for long. It's only temporary. You'll wake up tomorrow and you'll feel like crap and you'll still have the same issues. And it's, it was right. And now I'm telling myself that, but he's still there always for me. He's let me vent and rant <laughs> all sorts then to help me stay on the sh to stay on the path that I want to be on and I appreciate him so much for everything that he's done for me. The other mentions <laughs> of course are my puppies. Um, Zach and Cody have been here with me through all of it. Um, Cody has and then Zach has joined Medway. Um, honestly, like I know people are gonna say, oh, they're just dogs, and I know they're dogs. I'm not like I know they're dogs, but they're like my wee family here, and they've been there for me when other people haven't. They've been there all the time. Anytime I need them, when I'm upset, my puppies are there. They look after me. They cheer me up with their wee smelly faces and their wee cuddles. So they have really helped me through this. Believe it or not. Um, next is my family and friends as well were a huge help. They supported me and accepted my decision. Um, spending time with them, alcohol free um, and 
when they're drinking as well and there's no pressure or anything there which is seriously appreciated because it would be a lot more difficult if there was that pressure to drink and I want to give a special thank you to Kim my cousin because she actually quit drinking uh, a couple months before me um, well done Kim proud of you and she was definitely an inspiration for me to stop drinking as well she was a kick in the bum that I needed I think um, where I realised like if Kim can do this I can do it because we were both pretty pretty crazy drinkers <laughs> I feel like I'm getting an acceptance speech for like an Oscar or something. I downloaded this app just whenever I started and it's called Easy Quit, Easy Quit Drinking. And this is sort of like the layout. It tells you like how much money you saved. Um, I've saved over 500 pound from not drinking. That is, I think I put on 20 pound a week or something. And to be honest, I've, pro I've probably spent more than that loads of times. But I just put on like the basic um, price that I would pay and that's what came up. So I've actually saved so much money. Um, and then it tells you, the thing that I really like about it is it tells you your health, how your health has been repaired. I'm not trying to be preaching and saying you should stop drinking. I'm not judging at all. I can't. Um, other things that have helped me a lot are Instagram and Facebook pages. If you're someone who is trying to stop drinking, for example, or stop using drugs or anything like that, there are loads and loads of pages on like Facebook and Instagram where there's like millions of people who are trying the same thing and who are, some, who are struggling as well. And there's a lot of support there for you. Like there's actually, at the minute, especially because of quarantine, um, there's a lot, a lot of Zoom calls going on for people who are struggling with sobriety um, and you know recovery um, that you can join and you don't have to like talk you can literally mute yourself mute your camera and just listen to the people chatting there's podcasts and stuff as well by people who have given up alcohol um, I read a book um, what was the name of that book again two seconds um, so it was called the unexpected joy of being sober um, and the writer is called Catherine Gray uh, that book was actually one of the first things that I'd done whenever I quit and it was a massive, massive help. Um, it's kind of like her story of how she became sober and why she became sober. So any money that I would usually have spent on alcohol, I give to Gary and he put on like a wee treat jar for me basically. And then at the end of the month I was able to like spend that. So I actually used that money to buy a pair of vans. I got this ring light as well. Um, and all we, all we things as well, like clothes and stuff, just to like treat myself to. So it feels like you're getting something out of it. It's sort of childish, but it helped me. Another thing is, um, if you go to like an AA meeting, um, they'll give you like these wee chips. This one here says 24 hours. Sorry if you can't see it. Um, they give you them meat chips. I didn't actually go to an AA meeting. Um, that's not my type of thing to be honest. Um, but they are available as well. But Gary actually went online and bought me these wee chips. Um, and a wee tray to keep them on as well. They're so good to just look at and remind me of how far I've come. Um, and they... So I have my 24 hour, one month, three month, three month, four month. On the wee app as well, it kind of alerts you once you've got to a certain stage and gives you wee medals on there too so if you join if you join my Instagram you'll see them I always post them up every month. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a wee bit of speaking about the downsides of quitting alcohol and the benefits. So I'll do the downsides first and these are sort of like the struggles that I face because I don't drink. That's what it is. So the first thing is like, I already mentioned, is like when you do have an awful day or an awful week or something really bad happens that really badly affects your mood or your mindset or whatever, having a proper good sesh really helps at that moment. Like for me, if I had just a bad week, I would just get so, so drunk 
off my head and I wouldn't even think about it. Like if I had some like decision to make or whatever, I was just drunk and forget about it. Forget about what I have to face in reality. And that's something that I did struggle with at the beginning. Um, not so much now. Some days I still do be like, oh, I'd love a drink. That's probably the only thing now that I really think is a problem that I still feel sometimes like I want to have a drink, but I don't. So that's all that matters. Um, but the thing with this escape is that it is temporary. I said that already, I'll say it again because it is probably one of the main things that stops me from doing it. It's a temporary escape and the next day when you wake up and your head's banging and you feel like absolute crap, one because you're hungover, two because you've drunk again and you still have all them issues that were there when you start, before you started drinking. They don't go away just because you drink. It is only temporary and it's potentially worse because you might do something stupid when you're drunk that might affect it even more. So it's not very, not really a good um, thing to do. Another struggle that I had and still do a wee bit but definitely not anywhere near as much as I thought I would is being around other people who are drinking. At the start, I did struggle with this slightly, um, just because it is easier to drink when everyone else is drinking. Where we live, it's such a like society sort of normal thing to do, to like, just get drunk, especially when it, the weather's good. And me sitting and being like, oh, I would absolutely love to go out with everyone now, um, sit in the backyard and get drunk. It did cross my mind, I won't lie, but I didn't do it. What I did do is like I got wee non-alcoholic drinks and I still got, you no, know, I got a wee picture with it, put it on my wee Instagram and it made me feel a lot better and I didn't, I didn't stay the whole night. So like if everyone was really plastered drunk, I would just be like, right, I'm, I'm away home now and that helped me and people were supportive of that. I think it would have been harder if people were like, oh no, please stay, please stay. But because they knew in my wish, like what I wanted, they, they were fine with it and I just went home whenever I started to feel a bit overwhelmed or anything like that. Because I don't know about you, and I know I was one of these people, but sometimes whenever you're sober and people are drunk, it can be a sort of annoying. <laughs> it can be a sort of annoying atmosphere to be in. Um, just because like people do talk absolute crap when they're drunk. I was one of them people. I still talk crap when I'm sober, but you know what I mean? You get my point. It's that type of thing gets to me. I'd be like, oh, this would be so much easier if I was on their level, if you get what I mean. Another struggle would be like triggers. So there are a few things that sort of trigger me to make me feel like I want to drink. Um, I've already said if I have a bad day or a bad week or something like that. If the weather's good and everyone on the whole planet is drinking and I'm like, oh, I want to drink. That sort of gets to me, but it's okay because I, I don't need drunk to have fun. Another thing is like, if I'm in the car with someone and they're blasting the tunes and I'm like, oh, I just love to go and get drunk. That air sort of triggers me. Um, if someone's drinking a really nice flavored drink, I'd be like, mm, I'd like to taste that and just drink it or whatever. But that's not really it. And like, if I'm getting ready to go out somewhere, that triggers me a wee bit because I always remember getting ready to go out and get drunk. But it's fine. These things are only small, very, very, very small struggles compared to the benefits. Even though I had a lot of my memories stolen from me from the many years of drinking, and I don't remember a lot of the times when I was drunk. There are times I do remember and there are some very, very funny, like great crack memories that I enjoyed at the time and still laugh about. <clears throat> and still laugh about now and enjoy with my friends and family and just be like, oh, do you remember that time? And it's sort of one of the main struggles where I'm not gonna have any more of them, like stupid memories, like, at Kim's wedding, I fell down the stairs when I was drunk and it was hilarious. It was, we still talk about it. I think I'm confident in the fact that I'm a 
funny enough person person with a good personality. I'm sure there are still other things that I, I will do sober that will be worth a laugh in the future. I'm not too worried about that. I thought that like nobody would want to be around me anymore or hang out with me and like they wouldn't invite me places or want me to be around them because I wasn't drinking and like they thought, oh no, she doesn't drink. She's not gonna want to come or whatever. But that's not the case at all. I thought like, oh, I'm not gonna spend as much time with them because we, when we spend time together, we usually drink or whatever. But it's not the way it's went. I've just let everyone know what I'm doing, that I'm not drinking, that I'll still come as well. If they are drinking, don't feel like they shouldn't invite me. I just made it very clear from the outset that like, I don't wanna lose anyone over this. I don't want to lose out. Right, okay, so we're moving on to the benefits of, of me stopping drinking. So there's quite a list of these. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on all of them just because this video is probably already gonna be quite long and I don't want you to be literally sitting listening to me ramble for 10 years. Biggest thing is that it has immensely increased my happiness and positively affected my mental health and reduced my anxiety. And they are the main reasons why I wanted to quit and they have 100% happened. Um, I feel so much better so much happier, like I have better energy, like more energy, um, I'm sleeping better as well, um, my mind is clearer, my memory is better, something that I, I'm so happy about because I couldn't tell you what like my life was like four months, the four months before I stopped drinking, but I could tell you pretty much everything from this past four months where I've stopped. Um, and one of the sad things that, that I always talk about is how I don't remember my teenage years because I just spent them drinking. I remember obviously some parts but a lot of it's foggy and black and I'm so glad that I, I don't have to lose the rest of my life. I've, I've lost out on a big fraction of my life so far so I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. Um, obviously no hangover is a massive benefit. Hangovers are brutal, awful to your body. Just the worst, the worst thing ever. An animal who drinks, I'm sure, knows that it is the worst thing ever. And probably everyone has said, oh, "I'm never drinking again." And I just woke up one day and was like, "That's actually, I'm never drinking again." <laughs> I think in the hangover just got that bad. Um, another thing is like the no beer fear factor. Um, I'm not waking up in the morning being like, "Oh, what did I say to her last night?" Oh, she's fighting with me, and I don't even know why. Or trying to sort out these problems in, the, in your relationships that you've made when you were drunk, which are, are false and unnecessary. Like, because you're not yourself when you're drunk, really. People say you're your full, true self, but it's not, that's not true. It affects your behavior so, so much. Noticed that I have far better concentration, far better motivation in myself. Like, obviously I started this YouTube channel after I got sober. Um, which has been great help as well in my sober journey. Um, it's really like changed my life a while lot doing this channel. It's given me something to look forward to. It's given me some a hobby to do. It's you know it's made me be really creative again. Um, it's made me have fun with like other family members with my husband. You know what I mean? Like it's really helped. Um, I wouldn't have done this if I wasn't sober. I've started um, my own business, so I'm selling the Darcy's Candles. I also started a new course that I'm doing. I'm actually just almost finished it now. It's, um, it's working with children with uh, special needs. Um, and I'm really enjoying that course as well. And it's and I wouldn't have probably done that if I wasn't sober. Um, I feel like I have better relationships with the best people. Um, I've been spending more time, like quality time with my family, as much as I can anyway. Um, and sober and it's far better like I don't know like if you'll understand what I mean but a sober relationship with someone is so much better than a drunk relationship a lot of my relationships I feel like were drunk relationships because often I was spending time with people we were just getting drunk and we were drunk together and like you, you spew out like all this information about your life get it all off your chest and then they know all this stuff about you and then you see them when you're sober and like it's so awkward 
you're not it's not the same relationship you have with them when you're drunk and now that I am sober I'm so much more open and honest with people when I'm sober I don't feel the need to be like drunk to tell people things I've been told that I look more attractive um, I'll put a picture of when I before I was stopped and when I did stop that I posted on my on my page on Facebook and lots of people said my skin looks better, my hair looks better, my eyes look brighter, I look healthier, happier, all these things like and obviously that's a really good positive benefit. Um, I've become more confident on myself, like way more confident, more my self esteem has risen um, a lot as well. I just honestly feel like a better, more well rounded human being, I feel more put together, more alive. I feel like I have more time because I'm not spending it all hungover or drunk. I feel like I have more time on this planet, which is what we all want. Um, I feel like I'm not wasting my life anymore. I feel like I'm, I have goals, hopes, dreams that I want to achieve instead of just feeling like I'm going to melt down in a second and do you know, like that feeling is gone. I feel, I feel amazing about this. I'm really happy I made this decision. I think it's probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who supported me through it. If you're going through something similar, feel free to send me a wee message. I will be happy to respond to your messages. Um, I'm not a therapist or anything, and obviously I'm still going through this myself, but any help I can give you, I will. And reach out to people as well if you can. Um, if you are going through this, um, I hope you're doing okay. It will be okay. Just take the first step and notice yourself that you do have a problem and that it, can, it is fixable. It's really fixable. Um, but the first step is just admitting it, I think, to yourself, which is what I really, what I had to do and I did struggle with that. I think that's the end of this video. I've, I think you've listened to me talk for a long time. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below or send them to me privately. I'll link my, um, I'll link my Facebook page below. And that's pretty much it. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. It means a lot to me. And leave me a comment if you want to share this video, um, that would be amazing as well. Maybe share it with someone who you think could be struggling with alcohol addiction or drug addiction or anything like that or just might be interested in it. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I actually reached 200 subscribers yesterday and I'm so happy about it. Thank you so much everybody who subscribed to my channel. Really um, brightens up my life to be honest. Remember, it's nice to be nice. Be kind to people, look after each other, look after yourself, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!